Gotta thank Yahweh for being the chosen seed of Israel. Here's the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Yah. And the faith of my Shiah. Oh, yeah. I gotta thank Yahweh for being the chosen seed of Israel. Here's the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Yah. And the faith of the Mashiach. Shalom, Israel. So we're going to be talking about the hustle culture. What makes our people so stiff-necked in these current times? What makes our people so stubborn? I mean, it's like we're caught up in the matrix, trying to grab any identification that we can set our minds to. We are literally, as a people, trying to cling on and copy everything that our enemies throw at us. And I mean, you look around, you see it heavily. The word says it best like this, brothers and sisters. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and verse 3, it says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. See, it's not enough even for our people to know who they are, but they don't even consider. They don't even care. And you sit there and you wonder why these generational curses keep being repeated. You wonder why our people keep going through all these atrocities, being shot down in the streets, being discriminated against, everything from A to Z. And you sit there and you're wondering for a solution and you're trying everything that you possibly can, but you can't figure it out. You don't get it. So that's the problem with our people. We just don't get it. We think that we can start a movement and try to change our enemies' minds or get them to love us. We think that we can integrate with them and think that's gonna change things. We marry their women. We do everything they do. We celebrate their holidays, but yet nothing changes. These nations still hate us. And our people turn to this hustle culture. Everybody wants to be a rapper. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to get in the game so they can call our women bitches and hoes degrading them while degrading themselves at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone. See, that's the plan that our enemies have for us, and we're doing a good job of it. Destroying ourselves. Forget the Ku Klux Klan. Their job is cut out for them. We're killing ourselves with all this wickedness, with all this madness. The hustle culture has gotten our people turned out. And you want to know the sad part about this whole thing? We're training our children to be exactly like us. Repeated generational curses. The word of the Most High has hit its mark so hard and so profound. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim. I will also forget thy children. So you see where this hustle culture has gotten us. You see where all this madness has gotten us, brothers and sisters. Just like we read in Isaiah, we do not consider even the ox knows his owner. But Israel does not even consider. They don't even care. Now, just imagine if one of these current day rappers just came out and blatantly said that you Negroes are the chosen people of the Most High. You are 
the scattered Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Just imagine if just one came out and blatantly said that. But you know what? That's not going to happen. Let me tell you why. It's because our people are sold out to the dollar. They sold out for that green Kool-Aid. They love it so much that it's coming out their ears and their mouth and their eyes. That's how bad it is. You see, they don't want to give up this lifestyle. They don't want to give up the greens. They love this world. They love their enemies. And granted, you had a few rappers that came out in the past, but small, low-key rappers, but I'm talking about these major ones. The ones that millions of people are buying their albums. But you know what? There's one solution to this, brothers and sisters, and that's going to be total destruction of the wicked. In order to understand how deep this hustle culture is amongst our people, we're going to have to go back hundreds of years to the Arab and transatlantic slave trades. Because we're talking about hundreds of years of conditioning, such a conditioning that is so profound that we even feel it even in our current times that we're living in today. You know, our people were taught to hate themselves ever since we got off them ships. Our people were taught that they were cattle, less than human, only a fifth of a person. This is what they instilled in our people. So you're talking about trying to break out of all that stuff. Because remember, we ain't, we're only like four generations from slavery. So you got to understand the conditioning is so real in our, within our people that it's going to take a while. It's going to take at least six generations to break this thing, to, to completely break it. And we know through the Most High, he's going to do that in us. So they put this white, blue-eyed man before us and told us to worship that thing. They set up their little white churches and they put us in a corner and they taught us religion. And we sucked it up and that's all our people knew. And you're talking about repeating that generation after generation with our people. And now you know why our people are so engulfed in religion and Christianity. It's because our people, we keep repeating the same cycles over and over and over. You get what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? You got to really grasp what's going on here. Because as long as our people keep repeating these cycles, guess what? The cycle is never going to be broken. It's going to keep on perpetuating itself over and over and over. That's a scary sight. And this is the reason why we we did all these captivities, seven captivities. You would think that we would have learned after the first one. But again, it goes to show you that repeated cycle. Then they struck us with the Willie Lynch syndrome. How to break a slave. They pitted us against one another. They would compare the light skin with the dark skin. Divide and conquer. That's what they did to our people. And that's what they're still doing. But in reality, we are doing it to ourselves because once the stage was set, once the Willie Lynch syndrome was set in place, they knew that we would just repeat it over and over and over. That self-hatred that we have for one another. You know, our people, we have the most disrespect within our people than any other race on the face of the earth. Again, this stuff stems all the way back to the beginning, ever since we got off these ships. So I'm just telling you, when we talk about the hustle culture, you got to understand how deeply rooted this thing is in us. You know, and they would do things, I mean, I can... We can go into details, but you all know, you get the picture. You, you all know what they did to us, all right? I don't got to go into in-depth detail. You know how they buck broke our the men and raped the women. You know how they threw the children to the alligators as alligator bait. They would put, they would put our brothers, our forefathers between horses and rip them apart. See, this is the kind of stuff that they're not going to put in history books. They're not going to tell you this in schools or colleges or your churches. 
because everything is always downplayed with these people. But I assure you one thing, something's got to give because this will be the last captivity that we will have to experience. And you know what? To keep us from keep repeating these cycles, the Most High will send his angels of death to purge our people, to prevent us from repeating these cycles. It's sad that it has to come down to that, but it is what it is. You know, it's funny because prior to the civil rights movement, we had more unity. We had way more unity than we had now. I mean, we had our own black businesses, our own black communities, and I'm talking about true black communities, not the so-called what they call black communities today, where you got a mixture of everybody and then a few blacks, and then you got some Asians who own everything. Prior to the civil rights movement, we owned our own stuff. Now, I know y'all know about Black Wall Street, but see, that was only one that they covered. There are many Black Wall Streets across the Midwest, but they're not going to tell you about that kind of stuff. So prior to civil rights, it seems like we were starting to really get it together. Yeah, our people were still caught up in the Christianity and religion, but our people were really coming together, creating their own communities. And then when civil rights happened, it just went all downhill. We're talking about 80 years of destruction of our people. And it, we just went backwards. We went completely backwards. I mean, completely backwards. And this hustle culture really started to take off when the CIA started pushing drugs into the communities, when they started taking the black men out the home, putting them in the jails. The coin tell pro. You know what I'm saying? All this was planned. These heathens sat around their think tanks and they planned this thing out all the way from civil rights movement to this current day because they knew we would integrate with them. See, they don't care about their own. See, we're the ones they're trying to destroy. And civil rights was the worst thing that could have happened to our people ever. But again, it is what it is because the Most High allowed it. See, we are so hard-headed. We just don't understand. And learn this lesson, brothers and sisters. Every time when you study the history of our people, how they fell, 10 times out of 10, it's always because they started intermingling with their enemies and worshiping their gods. 10 times out of 10, every time, hands down. That's what happened. And so when we started to take on this hustle culture of the heathens, guess where it led us? Downhill, fast forward into this current day. We are so far gone, so far at the bottom, it's not even funny. You see, no one never taught us how to be good stewards of our finances, of our money. No one taught us the art of saving. No one taught us how to invest because our forefathers never passed anything down to us because they gave all of that up trying to follow the heathens. And here we are trying to run the same hustle. This is why you can have a brother decked out in the finest clothes with the most expensive gold and rings, all kinds of fancy stuff. I'm talking about having like $50,000 worth of merchandise on them or more. Driving around in fancy brand name cars while living with their mothers, not even paying rent. Where they could take that same money that they spent all on themselves and on their merchandises and go invest in some land. But yet they want to turn that around and give it all back to the enemies and degrade their own people with it. We're talking about the cycle, brothers and sisters, that perpetual regenerated cycle. It's a doozy because we're constantly going through it and going through it. Something's going to have to give. And I guarantee you, when the Most High sends his death angels, he has no other choice, but he is going to kill, kill, kill. And yes, many of our people are going to die. That's just a straight up fact. And you know why the Most High has to send his death angels as it's stated in Ezekiel? You want to know why? 
Because I'm going to tell you a secret here. If the Most High were to allow us to continue to live on, brothers and sisters, it would get to a point where we would just totally wipe ourselves out. We would be totally destroyed. And so in order to prevent that, in order to keep that remnant, the Most High is going to have to send his death angels to destroy our wicked brothers and sisters. Because if left unchecked, we would just keep repeating the cycles over and over and over. That is a profound fact. You cannot debunk that. You cannot even argue against that because you all know it's true. And you know, our enemies knew if they could take the man out the home, they would destroy the family. And they knew that we would repeat the cycle. In Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12, it says this, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. And you see, brothers and sisters, our old ways have been destroyed. We wouldn't experiencing all this stuff prior to the Civil Rights Movement. Our brothers and sisters were strong. They had strong marriages, strong black kids. Everything stayed black. And you see 80 years of degradation into this current day. And the enemy has told our women, you don't need the men anymore. You can survive on your own. You can live this hustle culture scam. You don't need that man. You see, every other race of people, when you look at Chinese women, they act like they want to be with their man. Mexican women act like they want to be with their men. Middle Eastern women act like they want to be with their men and so forth. But when it comes to us, we hate our black women and our black women hate us. And it's total war within our own people. So until this gets corrected, we're not going nowhere. And I know that's going to be a hard pill for many to swallow. But something has to give. We need our women to check the women because the women are not listening to the men. And it's gotten so bad now to where the hatred is so in depth in our people. I don't know if this can even be reversed on our own. It's going to take a divine force to bring chastisement and correction to our brothers and sisters. Look around. The men have become like the women and the women have become like the men. You might be saying, now, wait a minute, brother. What do you mean when you say the men are becoming like the women and the women are becoming like the men? Well, let me put it to you like this. When women have to raise their kids alone, the children take on the characteristics of their mother. And I'm talking about that emotional aspect. And vice versa, the women have to become more of the masculine ones because the men aren't there. So you see how the roles are flipped. This thing is deep. It goes, the rabbit hole goes so deep. And like I said, this was planned 80 years in advance. They sat around and they planned this whole thing out from civil rights until this current day. And when you look at the whole thing, it's, it's scary. And I don't even think that we really grasp the true horror of the situation that we're in. It's messed up. It's jacked up. It, it's really jacked up. And we cannot fix this thing on our own. You know, it's like a bad virus. What happens when a virus enters the immune system? It starts to copy itself. And what it does, it tricks the immune system to produce the bad viruses. And now you got all these viruses that are spreading out through your body and it makes you sick. That's the way we are, brothers and sisters. We have repeated this cycle for so long that we keep spreading this bad virus to our children. 
this virus of wickedness, this virus of wrongdoing, this virus of bucking against the Most High and His laws. And this virus is spreading and it's spreading. That's the way we are. And you know, we cannot put the full blame on our enemies because we know right from wrong. The word says in the book of James chapter four and verse 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. And we are also told in Proverbs chapter three and verse 31, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. And so when I see that, this is the first thing that comes to my mind, the hustle culture, because we've been taught to go after riches. Get all the money you can get and go buy all the fine cars and clothes. You see, everything that the Most High gave us truth for, we did the complete opposite. Because this is what we were taught growing up. We were taught that the value of a man is measured by his wealth. And that's what a lot of our women go after. Let me repeat that again. We have been taught that a man's worth is measured by his wealth totally backwards and a lot of our brothers and sisters who have all these riches they're not even happy they don't have a peace of mind because why they chose to follow the ways of their oppressor and our people are so caught up in this thing and unfortunately it's not going to end well for many of our people the broad way is always the way of destruction for our people. Always has been. But we never learn. We never get it. So therefore, the Most High is going to have to purge. But I pray for those who are awakened. I pray that you all will take heed and seek the Most High for yourselves. I say shalom and stay strong. I'm here to encourage you, brothers and sisters, trying to paint to you a better picture. Everything I say, I back it up with the scriptures to get you out the matrix. It's been over 400 years of life. You got to open up your eyes. Because there's so many reasons we in captivity. You got to flee from the heathen. There is hope in the future, even though they're trying to do a scene. But we live to fight another day. Vengeance is Yah, we'll be praying for Yahweh. I gotta thank Yahweh for being the chosen seed of Israel. He's trying, yeah. Here's the patient of the saints. Whoa. Here are they to keep the commandments of Yah. Commandments of Yah. And the faith of Mashiach. Oh. Chosen seed of Israel, Israel. Yeah. Here's the patient of the saints. saints. Here are they to keep the commandments of Yah and the faith of the Mashiach. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, 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 oh. Do, do, da, da, da. do we do we do we do 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 we do 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 do